Hey everybody, welcome back to the boat shop. Uh, the uh, off season is nearly upon us, and so it is time to start building boats. I've already begun here uh, on, I've cut out the basic framework for a gas boat. This is my first complete, not only my first complete gas boat, but also the first one where I've uh, patterned it and cut all the pieces out. Um, uh, every stitch of it is um, is more or less my design. Uh, steal a lot from other boats, of course. Uh, but here it is. And uh, I've had a number of guys uh, message me in some of my videos asking, how do I build a jig? And well, I have a problem right now. My gas boat is sitting on my nitro jig and it don't fit. So we got to build a new jig and I thought, well, I'd show you how to do that. I'd already started the process, but I thought, well, you guys wanted to see it, so let's do it. Um, this right here is the beginnings of a jig. And so let me tell you what I use. You can use whatever you want, but some guys asked how I do it. And this is how I do it. Um, what I do is I run to the local uh, hardware store, Home Depot in my case, and yeah, I get two pieces of MDF. I do not know what MDF stands for. Uh, to me, it stands for not yet a jig. I know that doesn't work, but uh, that's what it is. Uh, these are two foot by four foot, three quarters of an inch thick. They come in this size at Home Depot, and so that's perfect for what I need. So two pieces, two by four, three quarter inch thick, MDF. I use MDF, and let me give credit to uh, Leonard for uh, turning me on to this stuff uh, quite some time ago. Uh, it is wood, but I believe it's not much more than sawdust that has been pressed and glued together to create a board. Uh, normal plywood will warp. I mean, it comes warped. It comes weird, and then you cut it, and then it moves more, and then as it ages, it moves more. This stuff is pretty doggone reliable. It just holds its shape, it's flat, um, it stays flat, you cut it into rails, they stay pretty doggone straight. When they get really thin, they start to move, and I'll show you how we're gonna take care of that. But uh, So this is gonna be our platform, all right, MDF. And this is, as I said, my eighth scale jig here. And let's see how much of it I can show you. Ooh, hope that boat stays there. It won't be the only time this boat ever crashes if it falls off of here. All right, so this is going to be my rear platform. You can see this one's already had some modifications done. This has been cut out because my stuffing tube is going to wind up right in here. Uh, my strut rides here. Uh, I built the eliminator on this one time, and so it has a deep cutout here, and that's why you see that shape. Um, but this is where the afterplane will ride and I cut it, I set it at a very specific height and it's square, it's straight, it's flat. Wonderful platform to build off of and you can use it many, many times. Uh, you can see I use a wide section here at the back of my jig. Uh, you don't have to do that. I've done that because the boat designs that I'm doing right now, I'm kind of stuck on Stodiker design hulls. I'm kind of fascinated by that. You can see on the transom here where the uh, non-trips on the side just come down square with the transom, right? There's nothing sticking down. I know a lot of boats where the non-trip will extend and then you have a step, right? Before you have your uh, uh, after plane, your actual floor. Uh, so if yours has, uh, has that step, well then of course that's going to sit on top here and you can't have that. So you're going to cut this piece to the exact width of the air trap of your hull, right? That's actually our target for this jig is this, these ribs that everything stands on are set at the exact width of the air trap on your hull. Ideally, again, this is an eighth scale jig. When I'm done with the gas jig, you will see these raised sections here will sit on the insides of the sponson, like right about there. And that gives me a surface that I can clamp to. 
or sometimes I'll drill a little hole here and screw it right onto it. That holds the sponson. Sorry, I'm going to knock this motor down. I borrowed it from David Brandt, so it doesn't matter if I break it. Uh, so that'll hold the sponson assembly perfectly straight, parallel with the center section of the hole, and it'll prevent twist as I build the entire boat with it mounted here. Okay? And it's going to be the same on each side. So that's the goal. I want this after plane area perfectly square with my sponson supports. The exact width of the air trap of my boat. Not that hard, really, when you get right down to it. So what I did beforehand is I measured... This one's already been mounted, of course, but this is marked as well for the exact width of the air trap that I've designed into the boat. Drawn my two lines. These are three quarters of an inch apart because I am going to stand up three quarter inch MDF on there. These pieces existed on here, as you would imagine. And uh, using a bandsaw, I zipped across, made four inch stands. Okay? So these are four inches high. The pieces that uh, came out of this area are here, shortened a little bit. And these are going to be our forward sponson supports on the new jig. Obviously, they don't need to go much further forward because the gas boat is a whole heck of a lot larger. Okay, so that's what these two are. I've already clamped them together. Run the sanding block across them just nice and easy. Make them nice and square. I did the same thing with the two pieces of this. The side material of the MDF that I cut off. My four inch pieces. I had originally clamped those together. And then I take that sanding block and I just run down it real carefully, trying to stay real nice and square, just to basically take off any high points that I've left behind. Okay, so now I have my two pieces exactly the same height, and they're four inch. And when I get them mounted, they're going to be exactly the width of my air trap. Okay. And now this section that remains is the actual floor of my jig. This whole area here will go on here. Okay. Now I'm doing a little bit of a double whammy as I put it together. I'm using, if you want to copy what I'm doing, so you're getting three quarter MDF and you're getting number six by one and five eighths drywall screws. As we already talked about, I pre-drilled well, I didn't talk about it, but I marked, and then I've pre-drilled my holes. Okay, and the idea there is that the screw passes through easily. Because it needs to be a slip fit through the lower, and then that way when I thread it into this portion, it'll pull it down on there tight. Now, one of the secrets of MDF, uh, it appears hard, it feels hard when you pick it up, knock on it, you think, boy, this is great stuff. And then you set it down just a little too roughly on the floor, and you break a big chunk out of it. It's very, very brittle, okay? So don't forget, it's really brittle. You have to be careful with it, handle it carefully. And when you're drilling your holes, don't go near the edge, because it will shatter out. And as I said, you do need to pre-drill this portion. You're drilling this portion large, this portion is smaller so that the threads will bite, okay? Again, if you're going to copy what I'm doing, absolutely fine. I've learned a lot of stuff the hard way. Uh, come in two inches on your first hole. Give yourself 11 inch spacing. And you'll land at about two inch from the other end, okay? So we've marked exact width of our air trap. We've cut exact four inch pieces off of each side of what is going to be the base not the base but where the floor of the boat will mount i've pre-drilled my holes 
I've countersunk them on the back side so the heads of the screws sit up in there recess slightly. You don't want them sticking down because they're going to catch on your table and stuff while you're moving the jig around. And plus you want it to look really cool. I've pre-drilled one of these, no others. All I did was hold it in place and pre-drill it from underneath. With, again, smaller size so the threads will bite, right? So the first thing you're going to do when you're standing these up Again, if you've been careful, you've got these perfectly level and flat. I have actually used the outside edge of the MDF because they really do come really nice and square, right? So I think I can do this one-handed here. We're going to find out, but I already marked this, pre-drilled it. I'm going to just set this one end in place. I can just see my line here and I can just see my line there. Yeah, let's see if I can find the spot here. Look at that, isn't that wonderful? And then I would literally run the screwdriver on it and get this one pretty snug, okay? But it won't be so snug that I can't still scoot this around a little bit. So I've snugged my first one just slightly. Then I scoot it until I can just see my line so I know I'm where I want to be. And now I'm going to go underneath and use that pilot hole that I already drilled and go in there with my smaller bit, drill up into it, and then I'm gonna mount, you know, run my next screw in, snug that one down a little bit, and then repeat that process. Push slightly, do whatever I gotta do to get it to where my line is just barely exposed, drill the next hole, run that screw in. If you're careful with it, you'll wind up with a beautifully straight rail. And if you've been living right, you'll wind up perfectly square. And it does. And hopefully, after I've mounted this one, <laughs> hopefully, as I say, my measurement will be the exact width of my air trap. And I'm ready to go. I'll cut this precise width of my air trap. This piece now comes up onto here. I line it up perfectly up here at the front, each side. Drill. Put my screws in, being careful to come in two inches from the edge, any closer than that, it'll shatter. Okay, so I think uh, that should get you started. Um, you, might have, you might have noticed another thing. Again, I use this wide rear section. Let me show you why. This is a Stoddicker hole. This is the Eliminator. Uh, it has this flared sponson drop okay at the back so there's the width of my air trap over here but i needed a surface to mount this rear section on and you want it you know you want it square right so that's why i use a wide rear floor on my jig so that this surface here i have something to mount this onto it worked out extremely well this boat's just perfect for that i can still take this boat mounted on the eight scale jig uh, and everything measures out perfectly. Speaking of measuring, one of the things you're doing and one of the main reasons we do this is as you're assembling the boat, remember now we've kept our sponson surfaces perfectly parallel, there's no twist, but then we back it up. We've got everything exactly the same, four inch height, I don't care, use three inch, whatever you're using. But now as you're gluing and assembling things, you can go right at each rib, check its height, you compare that to the other side, or whatever you've designed the thing at, or whatever you want it at, you can wind up making this boat perfectly square. Measure the fronts, make sure it's perfect. Uh, again, I can drop uh, the eliminator or the stro, it's under here, on, and, uh, on the jig, and they sit on it perfectly, and every point still measures out perfect. So if you ever blow a sponson off or tear something up really bad, um, little minor fix we just did here, just haven't painted it yet. Uh, if you ever tear stuff up, you can go right back where you were. You slap it on your jig, square it all back up, build new pieces, whatever you gotta do, and you're back in shape. So uh, that's uh, an important thing I wanted to touch on. The other thing I was gonna mention just real quick, I know I'm going long here, but hopefully it helps somebody. Uh, if you have a boat, again, where the, uh, the, the non-trips on the rear extend down below the actual ride surface, Okay, fine, you need to cut the whole thing to the width of your, uh, your 
air trap we already talked about so okay that's great but another thing you may have noticed is that this I have it perfectly flat I don't have a break in the boat um, I refer to it as a break I think most people do where the after plane the actual ride surface of the hull rear portion of the hull is our square zero spot right and every other measurement we do sponson and angle strut angle all that sort of stuff is based on this is my zero point a lot of boats will have a break somewhere in this neighborhood where the floor begins to rise right that's a traditional style hull uh, I'm non-traditional anymore uh, I build my boats with full flat floors uh, if you're building a boat with a break and you want to support it on the jig I think that's wise uh, no big deal just when you build these sections you're gonna cut this nice and flat but then at some point where you're Wherever your break occurs, you're going to begin that angle upward and you're going to cut that shape into it also, right? And you're just going to lay them together. You're going to make them perfect. You're going to keep checking your angle. You're going to get a square exact what you want. No problem. You've cut this piece to the right size and then you just cut it, right? And there's your front angled section and your rear is your flat section. And then you can use any kind of angle finder, whatever you want to do to get your angle perfect and all that sort of stuff. So uh, just a slightly different way to do it, but very, very easy. Just a couple more fancy angles. Me, I'm a uh, lazy guy, so I like the flat floor and it works. And Stoddickers are weird. Hey, what can you do? So anyway, these will wind up getting mounted on here. That's where we're going to bite and square our sponsons onto. We're just going to do that with some cute little screws. See, recess them. Isn't that sexy looking? And away we go. Uh, just one last thing, if you're still watching, and I don't know why you would be. Uh, some guys ask about this also, so that's why I'm going to talk about it now. I know it's kind of still in the way, but the very first piece you ever put down on your boat, I know you kind of want to start gluing these frames together, don't. Cut your rear ride surface area, okay? Your after plane attach it to your jig. You'll see little holes here and there. This one's had uh, had floors screwed down to it. I drill holes, use pretty large washers, just really lightly attach your afterplane surface here so it's being held momentarily. And you use your straight edge and you make sure that it's perfectly straight and square with this section here. And now everything else you do builds off of that and that'll make your boat really nice and square and straight now you start laying your rear rails and start gluing it together so we'll talk about that in fact I'll probably show you some of that as this uh, boat starts to come together uh, but first I gotta finish a jig all right I'll get it done and then I don't know if I'll shoot another video at the end or whatever to show how it all lays on there but I hope that helps. Um, I really don't know if I've answered your questions. If you have more, please put them in the comments down below. I do respond. Uh, speaking of thumbs up, if you like the videos, please like the channel and also click a like on the video, wherever that button is, okay? Uh, because that'll help other guys see it. I find out that uh, I get a lot of comments from guys that just just need a little guidance, uh, and need a little encouragement uh, that they can do this. Uh, trust me, if I can do it, instead of napping, anybody can. Jackson Brown, say hi. All right, I'm out. More later.